Hello and welcome back. Today we're going to be looking at a double blaze spawner. In this video we'll be discussing the spawn mechanics as well as a systematic approach to building a double blaze spawner farm like this one. To build a double blaze spawner you need two spawners that are close enough to each other that you can activate both at the same time. Uh, to activate a blaze spawner a player needs to be within 16 blocks. Uh, so here we're in another fortress where there is uh, two blaze spawners that are close together. I've uh, marked out 16 block arms, so you can imagine if these arms were uh, rotated around to create a sphere around the spawner, you could uh, see that there's a spots in the middle between them where uh, both spawners would be active at the same time. In general, when a spawner is active, uh, try to spawn up to uh, four mobs at a time, and it will do that um, in a randomly selected time interval. Uh, between 10 and 40 seconds, which is uh, 200 to about 800 ticks. Um, an important thing to note is that it will not spawn more blazes if there are already six uh, that are already close to it. So that's an important constraint when uh, building this farm. One of the first things you need to do when you find a blaze spawner is to deactivate it so you can work around it safely. Um, here I'm showing what I think is the uh, the most effective way to light a blaze spawner. Uh, where if you look at it from the top, you have uh, glowstone that are in nine locations like this. There are two blocks uh, between these. And uh, with the blaze spawner itself has a, a block uh, above and below it. Uh, what's important when doing this is that the block that you're using for lighting, it must be a block that emits a light level of 15. So uh, glowstone is an obvious choice when you're in the nether, but also uh, frog lights, jack-o'-lanterns, sea lanterns, and shroom lights would work uh, just as well. It is important to note that torches only have a light level of 14, uh, so this pattern will not work. Uh, also, when you're using this light pattern, uh, it's important that you don't place any blocks that are not light emitting in the area around the spawner. Uh, for example, if you start doing stuff like this, um, that uh, breaks the light pattern and you could potentially get some spawns in here. And it took a second, but I, I moved these blocks around so you see uh, with these two blocks here and uh, Blaze immediately spawned. When doing research for this, I found some spawns. Uh, websites that showed that a torch pattern like this would prevent spawns. Um, so I, I thought it was worth uh, building this here just to show that that's, uh, it's not the case. Um, you still do get occasional spawns around the outside if you're using a, a torch configuration like this. Um, I believe this might be intended for bedrock mechanics because bedrock spawn mechanics are different. Uh, further emphasize the point that uh, these can be tricky to deactivate um, here's another example using uh, just a ton of torches to uh, try to deactivate this blaze spawner and uh, Still blaze are able to spawn and there. We got lucky and saw one spawn Next we'll take a look at some of the more detailed uh, spawn properties of these uh, So here is a deactivated spawner where I have some uh, glass around it that represents the spawn area um, so it's commonly believed that a 8x3x8 box is the uh, the spawn area of these spawners but it's actually uh, not the case so um, you know in the x and z direction 8 by 8 is an even number which would mean that it would not be symmetrical and I think that measurement comes from uh, the past because uh, in in the past there was a time where blaze spawners were centered around one of the corners of the spawner as opposed to the center of the block itself so I think there's still some misinformation out there from a very old uh, Minecraft version uh, blaze themselves will spawn uh, one block below, above, and on the same Y level as the spawner. Um, so here they can spawn on this level, on uh, this level, the same as the spawner, and one level above. Uh, so because blaze are about two blocks tall, um, you need to account for that when building your spawn box. Um, so most notably, the, the block above the spawner, um, because blaze are two tall you need uh, one additional block above it below your ceiling so like this in the x and z direction um, blaze can spawn up to four blocks away from the spawner uh, so one two three four and then you have your outside walls so given those properties that means that the actual spawnable box uh, that is needed for a blaze is uh, nine 
in the x and the z direction and four in the y direction. Uh, it is worth noting that the floor of the box will not actually be here um, when you intend to use this for a farm like we will. Another interesting note that I found is that in bedrock, the, uh, the spawn pattern is different. Instead of uh, spawning in a block formation like this, it actually spawns in a four block taxi cab distance away from the spawner. So taxi cab means uh, you can have one, two, three, four, or one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four. And if you continue that all the way around, you end up with actually a more of a diamond shape instead of a square, and the spawn shape ends up being smaller than what's available in Java. One last note that uh, I think is relevant while you're in the nether, uh, since we have magma cube spawners now, if you're um, doing this with a magma cube spawner, you actually need to be at least uh, 11 by 11 in the X and the Z direction, uh, just because of how large the, uh, the largest uh, magma cubes are that can spawn from those. Now we're back over here in our nether fortress where we have our double blaze spawner. Uh, where we want to start removing all of the nether fortress from around the spawners. Um, the goal is to build our cages like we looked at before around the spawners um, in uh, something that looks like this. Um, of course you can use any block you want. Um, and uh, here is a, a test setup that's partially finished that we'll be using to talk about some of the other mechanics and the strategy to connect the spawners together. First, we want to talk about the bottom of our spawn box. Um, so because we're in the nether, we're dealing with blaze. Um, we're going to be using lava to push the blaze around. Um, so the level that we put the lava on is important. There are some uh, constraining factors. Uh, the first being that uh, blaze need a light level of 11 or less uh, to spawn. So uh, lava is a block that emits a light level of 15. So we need to make sure that it is down far enough below the spawnable area um, so the lava itself doesn't interfere with the spawning. And the second mechanic is that a blaze spawner will not spawn any more blaze if there are already six blaze uh, within a 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine cube. Um, so what that means is once the blaze spawn, we want to get them down away uh, from the spawner as fast as possible. So uh, a 9x9x9 nine by nine by nine cube, that means essentially more than four blocks away. Um, so one, two, three, four. If you get them below this block here, um, you should be safe to not be running into uh, that constraint. And looking at the light level, if you imagine these uh, blocks on the bottom, the lava is 15. That would put this block at 14, 13, 12, 11. Um, so you see if this block's 11, um, that means that this block up here will be 10. So we should be uh, safe as far as lighting goes. Um, so that should keep our spawn rates as high as possible. Another thing to note is that uh, above the spawner here, um, there are two spaces here which a, a blaze could spawn directly on top of your spawner. Um, and he might just get stuck there and hang out for a while. Um, so it is usually uh, beneficial to put one or two blocks above your blaze spawner to make sure that blaze do not spawn directly on top. All right, so we'll just uh, we'll move this lava floor just for the time being. And the floor itself, it, it is just a solid platform that's at the Y level that we already determined. Uh, we're going to allow the lava to flow its full distance. So that's eight blocks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Um, and it'll stop here naturally. And then we're going to go uh, down one level. And this distance here um, is going to be different uh, depending on the location of your spawners, which we'll uh, talk about in a little bit. So we no longer need these blocks here and we will uh, put the lava back in place. Determining which direction you want your lava to flow uh, depends on where exactly your spawners are in relation to each other. In this instance, these two spawners are about diagonal from each other, about as far away from each other as they could be uh, while still both being active. Um, if you had them in a more horizontal pattern, let's say you have one there and your other one was over here, um, it might make more sense to have them flow towards each other, or maybe they would both flow this direction over here and you would combine them somewhere over here. Um, really, you have to count how many blocks there are between them to see if uh, the, the lava 
and all of the combination mechanics and the stairs that you need to make this work if it will fit. A good way to start out when you're doing this is to find the center block uh, between your spawners. So the way you want to do that is by using the, uh, the X and the, the Z coordinate. Um, so for these I have the numbers written down here. Uh, so spawner 1, you have an X and a Z coordinate there. Spawner 2, um, for each of them the X, you want to subtract them get the difference divided by two and add it to the smaller number so you, you get essentially the middle block between them um, do the same for the Z and you end up with this coordinate here um, so that should be the center um, in the X and the Z direction between those spawners um, and once you have that coordinate you want to find the lowest Y value where uh, both of these spawners are active so in uh, my farm I have them uh, marked here with these red blocks so this should be the uh, the coordinate that's, that we uh, just found out. And you see that both of these spawners are active. It's a little tough to see that one. Um, and this was, I think, the second lowest block where they were active. I decided to go up one more block just because of, uh, of how small the area was. If I were to build this plat platform a few blocks higher, the, uh, the area where both would be active would actually get slightly larger um, until you get a above the spawner, in which case that space will get smaller. And this uh, space I'm talking about is of course the overlap between those uh, 16 block spheres that we talked about over here. Once the collection location is found, um, I put uh, four hoppers back here, um, just being directed into this chest. This is where our blaze rods are going to accumulate. Um, and I have some uh, lava flowing into there. So the goal now is to be able to get the blaze from both of these spawners into this lava channel uh, and dump them into here on top of these hop hoppers where we can uh, player kill them for the blaze rods. The tricky part about this is uh, figuring out how to interface this flowing lava uh, with uh, this lava staircase. One of the most helpful tips when uh, building one of these blaze staircases is that you want it to be a direct route. Um, so once the blades will come down here and they get pushed into there, it is a straight line from there into the collection chamber. Um, the reason is that if you go around turns, you end up with uh, something like this over here, where you can have two blades get stuck in here at the same time, um, and they will just stay stuck until you either kill them or they despawn. Then figuring out how you want to um, interface your your lava platform with your uh, transfer tunnel here. Um, usually you want to aim for having an entrance in the middle. Uh, so you have four blocks on the side, four blocks on the side. So this is directly in the middle. Um, so really that's just a question of how many blocks in this direction is it. So in this case we only have three. Um, and that number of blocks determines how you're gonna arrange your lava in order to get them to flow into there without having uh, them get stuck or too many dead spaces. Um, one of the most important things to, to look at is that your lava placement results in the lava flowing um, in an angled way right here um, so that they will always be moving towards your collection area. So for example, if I were to add another source block right here, now this is flowing directly into that wall, so if a blaze were right there, they would uh, likely be stuck there for a very long time. In this example, I think we're only using uh, two lava sources, uh, right there and right there. And that creates the perfect lava flow uh, in order for them to all combine nicely in the center. Uh, there aren't any dead spaces. I think over on the other side, um, they're flowing a bit further. So one, two, three, four, five, it's flowing six blocks. Um, so again, we wanted them to combine in the center. See in the corner, we have them going diagonally, so there aren't any dead spots there. Um, but because it is so much further away, it's almost the full distance that lava can flow, eight blocks. Uh, we needed so many lava sources across here. There is actually a dead spot there and there. Um, in my experience, it's not that big of a deal. Eventually, other blades will push them out of that space and they'll work their way over. Um, it's far more detrimental if you have blades get stuck in these corners. The biggest advantage of collecting your blades in the center 
of this area is that it makes your lava placement symmetrical. Um, so any place that there is a lava source across this side, there is also a lava source across this side. So let's see if we can uh, figure out where they all are. Okay, we got rid of all of them except for those two. And you can just kind of start placing them back in to see how it affects the flow. Alright, so there we need some more. So let's put another one in the center here. That should bring it closer to the middle. Uh, still one block short, so one more in the middle. And there we go. Uh, just to clarify, they're all also source blocks here and here. And uh, those two source blocks, that's what creates the dead zone here, but more importantly, allows uh, this corner to be on an angle. Uh, stairs themselves are a pretty simple concept. Um, I did not come up with this. I've seen this somewhere else before, where you're using the idea of having uh, lava floating on top of signs and then lava flowing over top of uh, slabs um, to essentially push the blaze up half block at a time. Um, I think these slabs can also be stairs. So I've uh, spawned some blaze and we can watch them uh, go across the steps. Uh, looks like he's hung up a little bit, but he should get bumped by this one. It should push him in there, no problem. And he will start flowing across this way, where the lava will push him up these uh, half blocks. And he's able to make it into the collection area, no problem. So we'll just take a closer look at these stairs. Um, the lava is always sitting on top of these half blocks for the steps that are going up. Um, you need a sign uh, behind the lava sources to prevent them from flowing backwards. Uh, the first lava source here, it might be a little bit different depending on your exact scenario, um, but in general the first lava source is going to be sitting on top of a sign and you might need uh, one or more other signs in order to uh, prevent the lava from flowing where you don't want it. So in this case, um, you need a sign here so it doesn't flow back in like that. And just the way the distances worked out, there were two signs that were required um, in the back on those blast blocks. And once the blaze reach the top of the stairs, they'll be uh, dumped into the collection area here. Um, where I have uh, another sign holding up the, the last section of this lava, um, both on the top and the side. Um, notice that I do have four hoppers across here. Uh, I found that if you only had two, two hoppers and only two spaces for the blaze to build up, um, it, it doesn't take long to, to reach the, uh, the cramming cap and then they start to die via uh, mob cramming, entity cramming. Okay, so uh, next we'll move on from this test setup over here to the finished setup so we can talk about the, the differences. The first obvious difference being that I filled in all the missing glass blocks. Um, it is important that you have all of your empty space filled in uh, for the walls. If the blaze are able to see you, um, they can uh, transfer aggression. And if they see you, they can start to fly away or shoot fireballs. And uh, we definitely don't want any of that happening. Now that the mob box is complete and we don't need the glowstone there to prevent the spawning, um, you can see we have open uh, fence gates. So um, I'm using oak, oak fence gates that are opened just to fill this area. Um, they do not inhibit mob spawning at all, but they do hold up lava. Um, so what that is for is for the on and off mechanic. So over here on our player platform, I have a note block. When we hit that note block, uh, we activate an observer and a redstone path that we just have climbing up to the top of the, uh, the mob cage over here, hitting another observer. And then down here we have a dispenser with a, a lava bucket in it. Um, so because the fence gates will hold up the lava, but uh, won't uh, interfere with the mob spawning, that's a great way to do a mob switch for these uh, for these blaze spawners. Now that our double blaze spawner is complete, uh, you can uh, AFK here and wait for blaze to build up. 
uh, the blades will build up in here on top of your hoppers um, where I have uh, some trap doors here and that is just to keep the XP from getting stuck inside of the hopper. Um, one other thing that's worth noting is that mobs that spawn from a spawner do not count towards the normal mob cap. Most mob farms have a maximum mob count of uh, 70 mobs existing in the world at a time. Uh, but because uh, spawners bypass that limit, um, we'll see here in, uh, in a second that the blaze will continue to spawn even after I already have over 70 blaze. Okay, we've AFK'd here for a, a few minutes, so you see we have up around uh, in the high 70s. Uh, normally your mob count would uh, max out around uh, 70 mobs, um, but if we wait here for just a second, uh, one of these spawners should uh, spawn some more mobs, and there you go. We only got one that time, but that does prove that uh, these spawners will still produce new blaze even when you're over the normal 70 mob cap. And of course, I stopped recording and uh, we spawned four blaze. Uh, but you can see when we are up over 80 blaze, it does become uh, quite a mess in here. Um, I don't know if I'd recommend this. You can see the blaze, they get bounced around quite a bit. And uh, when you're killing the blaze in here, it is uh, it is important to have a good sword if you want to be able to do this effectively. So, um, you know, uh, sharpness, sweeping edge, very important. And of course, uh, looting three and uh, mending. So that is all we have for this farm. Um, at the time that this video is published, we're currently in the, the limbo state between uh, 119 and 119.1. Uh, so the normal uh, mods that we have to create the late Matica schematics, schematics and um, all the other tools to uh, check uh, mob spawn rates and all that, they're just currently not available. Uh, but once uh, 119.1 is out, I will return to this. I will provide a, a Light Matica schematic and a world download if you want to uh, visit this world for yourself. That is all I have for you today. If you uh, like this video, please hit the like button. And if you have any uh, questions or comments, please leave them in the comment section down below. Thank you and goodbye.